The fourth and final problem on the third formative assessment is about the remainder theorem. And specifically, this problem asks us to use the remainder theorem to determine the remainder that you get when you divide this polynomial h of x, this polynomial right here, when we divide this polynomial by x plus one. And we're asked to justify our work. So first, just remember what the remainder theorem tells us. It basically says that if, if you're gonna divide a polynomial by a linear um, expression like this one, then the remainder that you get Imagine you did a bunch of long division, you may get a remainder. And the remainder that you get is the same number that you would get by figuring out what value of x causes this expression to be zero and plugging that into the original function. So instead of just taking this polynomial and dividing using long division or some other technique by, by this um, expression, I can just think of the value that causes this to be equal to zero and just plug it in. So instead of doing long division, I can do a substitution problem, which is much easier. And so that's really what the remainder theorem gives us. It gives us a, a way of quickly figuring out the remainder without having to go through all of the division. So I'm gonna start by just acknowledging that negative one is the value of x that causes this expression to be zero. So if I plug, according to the remainder theorem, if I plug negative one into this function, then I should get the same, I should get the remainder, the value that I would get um, as a remainder if I did the long division. So let me just try to express that in writing. I'll say, according to the remainder theorem, According to the remainder theorem, um, the remainder of h of x divided by x plus 1 equals h of negative 1. So now all I have to do is evaluate h of negative 1 using substitution. So h of negative 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1 cubed minus 8 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 12. I've just copied my original polynomial and I've done the substitution here. This uh, I, I, I'm going to take my time with this computation because it's not hard to do, but you do you don't want to drop a negative sign or make a computation um, error because then you won't get the right answer. So let me begin using the order of operations. I am going to do there's there's actually no math to do inside these parentheses. I'm just using those parentheses to enclose my x value. So I'll do exponents. I, I do have a couple of exponents here. Two uh, times negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. And negative 1 to the second power is 1. So I'm just rewriting my expression here in a little bit simpler form. So now there are no more exponents. I did the exponents. And so now we're going to multiply and divide from left to right. We just don't have any division, just multiplication. So this is 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, minus 8 times 1. And then this will be 2 times negative 1, so I'll be adding a negative 2. I'm just going to write negative 2 plus 12. And then now all i got to do is my addition and subtraction from left to right. Negative 2 minus 8, that's negative 10 negative 10 minus 2, negative 12. So really I get negative 12 plus 12 here, which is just equal to 0. So the remainder that you get when you divide h of x by x plus 1 is 0. And what that means is that x plus 1 is actually a factor 
of this polynomial. So if you went and tried to factor this thing, uh, you would you would be able, you would find that x plus one is a factor. Alternatively, if you did long division and you took this polynomial and divided by x plus one, you would get a remainder of zero and you'd be left with a quadratic. Um, and you could continue factoring from there if your task was to factor this.